coming right there. All right, hey gents, welcome back to Tactical Rifleman. You see I've got a whole panel here with me. I have got Amber and Ryan from Fit to Fight Republic. And I've got Emery and Z from our Tactical Rifleman team. If you're not familiar with Fit to Fight Republic, uh, that's a YouTube channel, right? Yep. But um, you can go to uh, Fit to Fight Republic, right? YouTube slash Fit to Fight Republic. And if you guys are not subscribed to them right now, you are, you're missing out. Uh, yeah, just, I saw some of the videos. I was like, we've got to have the, we've got to have them come out here. So, um, what we have is a laundry list of videos that all of you are subscribers and viewers turned in. Great questions, combatives, uh, self-defense. And uh, we're gonna work our way through the questions. And uh, we're gonna start off with question number one. Mm. What is the best way to deal with multiple threats? Z, why don't you start us off? So uh, we read these questions prior to, and we kind of talked about it a little bit, and things that I've seen taught to prisoners or prison guards that work in prisons without guns, without uh, any tools really at their disposal, and sometimes they're outnumbered greatly, you know, 100 to 1 in some, in some situations, right? Uh, so this is a big deal for them to learn some technique to survive uh, temporarily until they have some support coming in to help them or until... You know, the fight dies down, I don't know. But what we've always leaned towards was uh, what's predominantly called the Muay Thai clinch. Or it's a Muay Thai technique is where I learned it, right? But it's essentially uh, a position where you hold someone's head and you, you hold them close to you, managing the space, not letting them too close. In uh, the exact perfect spot to receive knees, elbows, head butts, anything you can, you can implement within that position is at your disposal. The best thing about it as far as dealing with multiple people is when you've got that person and you're anchored to them and connected to them, um, you have a huge lever at the top of their body, Carl, like their, their head is a lever, right? It's connected to their spine, connected to their ass, right? Big long lever here, and I can swing them where I want them. So uh, you can essentially use them as a block or, or piece of cover between you and the, the other threats or the multiple threats that are trying to get to you. And yeah, you're not gonna get away damage free in any kind of fight, I, I'm sure we all agree on that. But you're gonna minimize damage and you're gonna keep from being surrounded, uh, keep from uh, getting multiple people hitting you at the same time where you can't really anticipate anything and, and you know, uh, the worst case scenario could happen, they knock you out or they do something uh, uh, that cause you to be very vulnerable. So that's my take on we can demonstrate in a minute. What, is, what are some considerations uh, for that that you see, guys? Yeah, I, I mean, we, we do a ton of clinch work, head control, underhooks, that kind of stuff. I think that's, once the fight's on, you know, I, I, I think being able to use that person as a shield and be able to control that, that space, put them between you and whatever else you're, you're having to deal with is, is really important. I think if it's before, you know, the fight's on, pre-contact, kind of preemption, hitting that first dude and learning to hit hard and being able to knock somebody out and drop them. Maybe, maybe that is my de-escalation for the second, the third, the fourth guy. You know, if I, if I hit that first guy so hard and so, so violently, maybe the second, the third, the fourth is like, ah. Yeah, I was talking maybe. You know what, maybe I, don't, maybe I don't want, I didn't like that dude that much anyway, you know. But once the fight's on, I think you're right. You gotta be moving. And if we're connected, I gotta know how to move with another human being too, mm. you know, be, being able to control somebody. Cause it's not enough just to be able to move my own body weight now. I gotta be able to manipulate somebody else. Right. And that's not always that easy. And you said something before we, we went on that I was glad to hear cause we talk about this and, and it, it's not something I've heard a lot is, you know, you're always taught to avoid corners. For me, if I'm gonna do more than one person and I can't just run, well, if I back myself into a corner, I've only got 90 degrees I have to deal exactly. with now. Right. You know, and I'm not saying that's that should be my go to, but I'm not saying it, it, it never should be right. I should never back myself into a corner. Well, in the context of that prison guard, where's he going to go? He's going to run to the door and try to unlock it and potentially just get hit from all kinds of angles. He's limiting his exposure if he's in that corner and he knows that their policies and procedures involve someone coming to help them at some point in time. Right. So he's got to wait it out. 
and be safe as he can during that time. Yep. From that point, you can start getting a, a better picture of what's going on as well. So if you're trying to just, you think that this is the threat and he's got his buddies over here, but you haven't taken a, the chance to look around your surroundings, you don't know that there are other people over here, over there, maybe getting to that corner, being able to, to see the full picture of what's going on so that now you can properly navigate your surroundings, deal with moving this person that you mm -hmm. maybe have controlled to keep between you and get a better picture. And then maybe you can start getting to wherever the next safest place is. The involuntary effects uh, of your physiological part of you that happens under stress, under, under in fight situations, I mean, you can't control it. Involuntary yeah. is the key yeah. word here. It's gonna happen. You're gonna get tunnel vision. It's meant to help you survive. We're built to survive. Instincts are build us, it, it helps us to survive. It's just, can we do it effective for that situation as we get more complex problems and issues, right? So good point right there, Amber. I get in that corner and I've slowed things down long enough just for me to process what the hell is my next step. Right. I got to control this, what's in front of me right now. If I've got that clinch, if I'm in that corner, I've limited my exposure to other people or other threats. Now, what the hell do I do next? Yep. So you got that time. So that's, that's awesome. All right, real quick, um, for those of you that are not read on to it, um, would you show, uh, either, like, either one of you two guys, one of you play bad guy, or two of you play bad guys, but just show how you would uh, use that guy as a shield. Yeah, what, what did you have so to add? Yeah, I, was, <coughs> I agree guy. with everything you, you guys said, everything. Uh, I would add, you know, you're talking about like a Muay Thai clinch. Um, don't lock yourself down to techniques, right? I mean, if somebody's got hair and you grab the top of that head and you pull it down, you can leverage them in a the circle. You can do all those things. If you got a finger and you crank that finger around a little bit, you're spinning that guy around, right? You got a wrist, all those things. Learn how to take a hit, spin them around. That's going to give you that 360. I've, I've Good actually point. been there. Good point. Good point. And I think Emory's saying like, we mentioned Muay Thai clinch and, and there's a lot more to it than just mm -hmm. And when you say Muay Thai clinch, that, that's our clinch in general is involving a lot of different things, but the principle's the same. I control that body, I've locked to him, I've anchored myself to something that can be used as cover to limit my exposure. Uh, I'm able to effectively be offensive against that threat that I'm anchored to and I'm managing with, uh, with my body and their body, right? And uh, I can kind of move them while I'm managing that and keep them from being too offensive to me. Of course, I've got to pay attention to that situation at hand because maybe they got pockets like free on the street. You got to watch their waistline where their hands go, which is a problem. Um, but the principles are all the same. So however I do that, whether it be some technique where that I can make, I can make work, like I grab an underhook with, a, with the clinch or the collar tie, I grab a limb and it's working somehow and I'm controlling them to the same degree where I'm preventing myself from getting beat up by everybody at once and I'm being effective offensively and not having to be defensive the whole time, I think they all could work. So principle-wise, I think we'll hit it too when we show it a little bit We'll talk about some of the things you might get into. All right, so when we're talking about the clinch or the Muay Thai position, uh, in general, it comes kind of like this here. So if I've got a hold of him, I'm getting a collar tie. If anybody that knows wrestling or I know there's different verbiage out there, I don't want to get into the mix of jargon too much, but essentially I've got my hands wrapped around his neck and, go, and cur curling up to the back of his head, not just on his neck because his neck's strong. Lift up, Emery. Very strong here. Now lift up, Emery. A lot weaker here. I've got more of a lever on the end of his head. I want to, I mean, think about it. When I'm using a wrench, I'm at the end of the wrench. I'm not up close to where the wrench is attached to the nut, right? So I'm here. That is a general Muay Thai clinch. Now, the variations that we kind of discussed, we're not getting into the specific details and techniques to refine all this, but you can see that some of the components of this clinch is, I've got a hold of him, but I don't let him get too close because if he's gonna wrap around my waist, which would be bad for me, he has to get through this frame that I've made. So I'm getting him close enough to do what I wanna do, but not so close to where he can become offensive uh, to, a, to the degree that would cause me to have problems, right? So I'm here. So now I can do this with an underhook and, a, and an overhook onto his head. I can do this all kinds of several different ways, but. The one we found the best is leveraging that head to move him around. So Emery just come with me and I can sling him, right? Uh, I'll be able to sling him in front of me. So if Ryan is say the bad guy here and I've got a hold of Emery and I've clinched and anchored to him and I'm able to make him think about what he's done wrong and feel bad for it hopefully, right? I see Ryan coming, I can bring him in between us. And now I've limited uh, Ryan's ability to do anything 
worse to me at this point, right? So I'm swinging him. My head is up while I'm doing so, right? So while I'm doing that, I could be hitting Emery and still seeing what else is going on. So some of that processing that Amber's talking about, right? I'm doing that in the meantime. I've got to hold him, hands, where's he at? Moving him, moving, moving. And then show us what it looks like in the corner, Ryan. If yeah, you I mean, basically, just, just concept-wise, right? I've got 90 degrees that I have to worry about now. I can't move, I've, I've, I've limited my mobility, but at least I know that. I know the area that I have to deal with. I know that for somebody to get behind me, I have to come off this wall. I have to come out of this corner. And probably, at most, I'm gonna have to deal with two people because no, no more than that can get in, right? right. And, and you guys are gonna get in each other's way and you know maybe you start crawling over each other and getting in the way and now I can start pivoting and moving off that wall and then yeah, work. Yeah, you got a guy engaged here. Right, so if I'm here, I can start working off this way. Boom. And now I've got just this. So I can see what's going on. Same thing that right. you were talking about earlier. I can see what's going on behind or in front of me. I've got 90 degrees I have to deal with. And, you know, based on whatever Emory does from here, dictates kind of where I'll, I'll go off of that. Right. One interesting thing here, too, like if Emory's, you said take his heart or take his consciousness. Yeah. If Emory's feeling like he's, uh, he's not in the fight anymore and Ryan notices that, he can switch out. Right. To his bad guy. He comes right. here. Exactly. Boom. Now I'm in here. Boom. He's taking care of me. Right? Yeah. He switch out accordingly, depending on where the threat is, what you, what you determine is, hey, where's the worst threat? What That's do I right. need to take care of right now? And when you've got hands on, you feel that, right? You feel their... Yeah, they're not fighting anymore. That, that tactile sensitivity, you feel all of a sudden, this dude don't want to be here anymore. Right. Becomes less aggressive. What do you got, Em? Yeah. Um, if, if I end up in front of the person, it's not a bad place to be, but if I can move to where I can start taking their back and breaking down posture and look to start getting into Good these point. corners and have control, that's going to give me another advantage. Maybe I, I take this guy out, I hang on to that, that strangulation for a while, he goes limp, and now I'm on to the next person. Good point. So they decided they were out of the fight, or if I take them out of the fight. Good point. And that's a good plan. Just We kind of started leading into that when we said, hey, you could switch opponents. So if I turn around and I grab somebody from the back, the problem with that sometimes is they become heavy, and they're no longer the shield that I want to move around with yeah. me. Yeah. So I have to that point. I've kind of dictated that I'm switching off now. Like, I got you. Yeah sit them down because I don't want to be holding you. That's right. not energy efficient for me. Right. And now I'm over here yeah. contacting this guy and I've got my new shield, All right? So to review real quick, principles, establish an anchor, frames. That means you don't just go and say, hey, I looked at the video with these guys on there and I seen how Z grabbed his head or how Ryan grabbed his head and I'm gonna do that and that's gonna work. You gotta feel how to distribute your weight. I gotta lean on him, you know, and we talked about this several times before. When I'm on somebody, I'm not like this. So this is, Emory could tell you, you feel me leaning? You feel nope. me leaning at all here? Nope. Now what's happening? And I'm still talking the same. I'm not using any energy. Emory's back. using energy. So that is something that you don't just learn by seeing and, and implementing casually. You have to feel that. And you have to be, you have to have training partners that are, are, are willing to let you lean on them. The principle is I'm anchored. I've, I'm, I'm distributing my weight properly, which is efficient for me energy wise, right? I'm making them use all their energy, hopefully right? Minimum on my side, which requires training again. And I'm directing them to be between me and the other threats by anchoring to them, but not anchoring so close to them where I give up my hips yep. right here. And you can see Ryan can lift me pretty easily here. Go ahead, Ryan. That's pretty easy. Smaller guy still lifts me easy because he has control of my center of gravity. Yep. But I'm here, Ryan's not lifting anything no. because I'm extended here, right? So that's our principle. Be able to be offensive while you're doing it. Keep them between you and the others. Contrary to popular belief, use the corner, right? I mean, now I've limited the, the, the places that somebody else can sneak up and attack me. So I think we covered it pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, good Closing stuff. argument? I, I, got, I got another little point, right? Just to the point that I made before. So Z doesn't have much hair to grab. He doesn't have much, much of anything. Don't use clothes. We're not using geese and that, that shit tears. I've ripped somebody off a bicycle before and that shirt went off and then I lost them. <laughs> and then they were naked. Um, you gotta find naked guy. An ear, however, right? An ear, you can stick fingers in the nose, right? Don't go for the mouth, they got teeth. But you grab an ear, even if that ear rips off, the other guys don't really wanna deal with it anymore. I think that's a, right? a great point. What we practice all the time, we can, obviously we can't practice ripping people's ear off necessarily, Top or poking bottom. their eyes. Top to bottom. 
But what we do competition-wise or just training where we're safe, Emory's a dangerous man, and I, he'll hurt me if I train with him too much. But we train where we can be offensive things that I can practice safely with my partner. But the good thing about controlling the position, once I know how to control that position is – And you can do all that stuff. I have all the opportunities. Do I want to draw my gun? Do I want to pull my knife? Do I want to ram your eyeball into the back of your skull? Maybe I do, but I have that ability, and we talked about once I've gained that bandwidth from processing and controlling that position, I have all the time in the world, so to speak, to figure out what the fuck to do next. And that might be do something very catastrophic to that person's face, which will get the reaction that you probably want. All right, so hey, that was our first question off of our laundry list. So this is going to, you can see this is going to be a whole series of videos and um, we'll see you next time. Be sure to click the like and uh, just that neighborhood friendly reminder. If you have not subscribed to Fit the Fight Republic yet, you're wrong. We'll see y'all next time. Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.